Wandami Bante. Brothers and sisters in the Dharma, everyone please put our palms together in Anjali to pay our respect to Bante. Please follow me to bow three times. First bow. Second bow. Third bow. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, everyone. I'm Moon, your MC for session two of the Uduvak Poya Uposata Day, organized by Meta Lodge Pusat Buddhist Joho. And uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, Bante Nyaninda with us today to guide us and to conduct for us this Uposata program. Bante graduated in electrical engineering and computer science from Sydney University, Australia. He received higher ordination as Bhikkhu under Sadam Maramsi Siado in 2004. He received serious contemplative training under Pa'au Siado in many places. And uh, he finds that study the original words of the Buddha according to the system of listening, contemplating, and meditating has greatly enhanced his understanding and practice of Dharma. Bante currently is the spiritual advisor of the Buddhist Missionary Society, Malaysia Youth Section. For session two, we have a Dharma talk by Bante, followed by question and answer. We have about one and a half hour. And if you have any questions, you can uh, type on the chat box. Uh, or if time allowed, we will invite you to verbalize the question. And uh, just a reminder, tonight we have a session three. Uh, we'll start at 7.30. So remember, 7.30, we will meet up again. Uh, quickly, uh, give me a few minutes to go through the significance of the Udu Vap Poya Uposata. Uh, this Udu Vap Poya celebrates the arrival of body sapling brought by Arahan Bikuni Sangamita Terry in Sri Lanka from the original body tree where the Buddha gained enlightenment in Bodhgaya, India. The sapling was planted in 236 BCE by King Deva Nampiyatissa in Anuradhapura, where it still grows today. Known as Jaya Sri Mahabodhi, it is the most sacred and the oldest living human planted tree in the world. Uduva Poya Uposata also marks the day Arahan Sangamita Terry arrived in Sri Lanka to establish the first Bikoni Sasana outside India. Queen Anula of King Deva Nampiyatissa was the first to be ordained, followed by thousands of ladies from all walks of life. The advent of Arahan Mahinda Tero on Posam Poya Day, June, and Arahan Sangamita Terry on Uduwap Poya Day marks the establishment of Buddhism in Sri Lanka and to the rest of the world. This picture depicts uh, Bikuni Sangha Mita Terry arriving in Sri Lanka in 236 BCE with the body sapling from Bogaya, uh, followed by its planting as Jaya Sri Mahabodhi in Anuradhapura on the December full moon day uh, of Uduwa. This picture depicts King Deva Nampiyatissa with all pomps and glories, paying the highest respect and honor, wading into the sea to receive the Jayasri Mahabodhi sapling, which is respected and honored as the living Gautama Buddha. So with uh, full of respect, I would like to invite Bhante Nyaninda to give us a Dharma talk on awareness of Dharma in daily drama. Bante, please. Okay. Now, the, this is my favorite title, Awareness. Uh, we don't need the slide first. Uh, oh, okay, I will later. stop share. Yeah. Um, okay, the title, Awareness of Dharma in Daily Drama, it's my favorite title. This awareness, before I explain about this title, the aim of this awareness of Dharma in Daily Drama is again to 
for the realization of Nibbana, which is realization of how life really works. Okay, and that's also the meaning of the word Dharma in here. And how life really works, I mentioned in the morning, it's very simple, but it's just that somehow it's so simple where we don't aware, we are not aware of it. Today I will go in very detail one aspect of it, but I will also go briefly on two aspects of the Dharma, which is which all Buddhists know, but how much we are aware of it, I, I'm not sure. Okay. First aspect is anicca, impermanence. Very simple. Everything keeps changing. Body, our body keeps changing, our mind keeps changing, things that we like or don't like also keep changing. But when we lose something we like, which means there's a change, we feel very sad. Sadness is not a problem. It's like if we are trapped in there thinking that things don't change, that's the problem. So the reality of life is very simple, but we live in this idea of permanent. Everything is permanent. I will show you another example that is very simple to see, but yet we don't see. is anatta, non-self. Non-self, we always, Buddhists always think that it's a very, very difficult thing that maybe 100 lives later we will realize, no, you can see it immediately. Okay? And it's always my favorite example is you only have two parts, your body and your mind. Your body keeps changing every second because billions of cells die and billions of new cells come up. And in fact, in science, I think every five days, you have a new stomach. Every 30 days, you have new skin. Every 90 days, new bone structure. And every about seven years, you have a totally new body. And your mind changes faster. Suddenly, you like to eat this. Then next moment, you thought, nah, maybe I, I won't go to that restaurant. I want another restaurant. You keep changing. So what's the implication? Implication is very, very significant if you, if you step back and think. Again, I give you an example that I always give in my Dharma sharing is that I'll just borrow one of, one of you. Let's say, um, don't get you know, offended. I just bor borrow one of you. Let's say TC Lim were to beat me up yesterday, thoroughly beat me up. And today, if I had a grudge against TC Lim, not so right. Because the TC Lim yesterday and the TC Lim today is not 100% the same. Because the body has changed, like I say, every second your body changed, and your mind has changed. So it's not 100% the same TC Lim. If you were to be angry and have a grudge at him, it's like TC Lim's brother beat you up yesterday, and today you are angry at TC Lim. It doesn't make sense. So similarly, the same case, because the one that beat you up yesterday is not exactly TC Lim, it's related. It looks similar, sounds similar, everything is similar, but it's not 100% the same. And, but if you are very careful about him, because yesterday he beat you, today he might beat you up again, that's correct. I'm not saying that you, know, you, you are not careful and let him beat you up, but to have this grudge or anger, it's not fully right because it's not the same. But all of us always, if someone beat you up or did, even not forget about beating up, even say something that, makes you angry, you already have a grudge for maybe I don't know how many years. So it changes our life significantly if you can see the reality of life instead of our makeup reality. Okay, I will talk more about um, the makeup reality that we live in. So few keywords in awareness of Dharma in daily drama. Awareness is what we did this morning to make us more aware. And one thing I didn't mention in the morning is when, you, when you're more aware of your breath, you are more aware of your emotions also. When you are angry or sad, your breath, maybe it's shorter, faster breath. So easier for you to detect your emotions. And it's very useful because when you are in negative emotions, you, I want you to explore next time when you are in negative emotions. You can do that also in positive emotions to explore where the emotions come from. But first, you have to be aware of your emotions and thoughts first, okay? So now, 
if you are aware, like I say about just now, the anatta, non-self, and remember, non-self is not nothing. Yeah, there is still a TC limb, which is not the same from yesterday, but I'm just saying there's no permanent TC limb. There's no permanent yaninda. There is an illusory changing, forever changing yaninda. That's the meaning of non-self. There's no permanent inherent existence. Okay. Now, the awareness is important because you just have to look and you don't need to do anything, you will see the Dharma. Same like Anicca. If you are prepared to look, to explore, you will see Anicca everywhere. You don't need effort to open your eyes, make a lot of effort, willpower to see Anicca. And similarly, what I'm going to point to you later, also you don't need any effort, which being an engineer before, I, I love it. You know, engineer loves the shortest most efficient way to, to solve things. So it's what I call effortless effort. But still, you need effort to at least to look at the direction that I point. And the next word is daily drama. Okay. Now, all of us have a lot of daily drama, maybe months less because I don't you know, work, I don't deal, I don't have families. But all of us, you will have you no know, daily drama with your, I don't know, husband, wife, kids, and so on, and your bosses you can see a lot of dharma in there. So don't waste those daily drama. I call it turning poison into medicine, problem into solution. If you can use the daily drama to see dharma, then the next time you have daily drama, instead of getting really upset and frustrated with it, you will have this idea, wow, let's, let me try to see something from this. Let me explore, let me have fun trying to see dharma in this daily drama. So I encourage you all to explore because only by seeing, by experiencing for yourself, then only you see the dharma. It doesn't work by just listening to me and keeping it here. You have to explore yourself and that's where the confidence of the dharma comes. Not by blind faith, by testing it out in your everyday daily drama. Now, the, another what I mentioned just now, which is important, is awake. And I would like to ask you this question to ponder also. If you are in a dream and you are in a serious accident and you're also worried about who will take care of your family member because you, you might lose your life. And if you don't wake up, that means you are still in a dream. How do you solve this problem? How do you solve the problem that you are in, where you are in a serious accident and then you are worried about your family members? You can type the answer if you want, or if someone who has an answer, maybe type it out in the, in the chat box, I have a look. But no need a lot of time to think. Um, I'll give you maybe a few seconds. How do you solve the problem if you are in a dream and you didn't wake up and you have a big serious problem in your dream. Okay. Uh, wouldn't say double check if it's a dream. Must realize that it is a dream. Yeah. Okay. If you very scared, okay, I like the answer. <laughs> very scared. Okay. Yes, if you don't know it's a dream, it's very scared. Okay. But once if it's in a dream and you know it's a dream, but you didn't wake up, you actually can do wonders. You can actually change the dream. As in, you know, you can change immediately, you can heal yourself because it's a dream. Okay, now what I'm going to do is to show you that your daily life is also a dream. And when you realize it, your problems will be solved the same. Okay, it's a big task, but I, I, will, I will slowly point to you, but you need to explore in your daily life. Okay, now first thing is, what is dreams? Dreams are Thoughts are created by your thoughts. Although 
unconsciously. So dreams are actually created by you. Okay? And to me, I'm always fascinated by dreams because in the, your thoughts in that dream create a whole world for you to experience. And you can, in fact, scare yourself. Like someone say, very scared. And do you realize that you are scaring yourself because the monsters, the ghosts in that dream is created by you, although unconsciously. So you are the producer, you are the director, you are the actor, and you're also the audience that gets scared. So similarly, your daily life is like that, okay? Now, how to, first thing before we move to that is that, Human beings, all of us, or most of us at least, thinks that all our problems come from people, situation, things that are out there. Okay? So we want to change, we want to control other people. Like we want to change your, my son, my daughter, you know, make sure my son or daughter play less computer games, my boss less demanding, maybe my finances is steady, you know. Maybe last time people would think you know, at least my finances have 1 million. Now in, in Malaysia, you want 1 billion because people are talking billion already. And uh, hoping that you know, all the, if all my problems solve, then I'll be happy, peaceful, contented. Which is a very difficult task, okay? Because the people out there also wants to change you. Your children will think, you know, what if, at least my mom becomes more understanding or my dad more supportive. And your boss will think, what if, you know, at, at least if I could, my subordinates, my workers are more obedient, more helpful, more, more you know, working harder and so on. So everyone wants to change everyone. And very difficult to work. And I want to show you that you don't need to change the outside to change your world. Because you're looking at the wrong place. What you experience, and this I've been sharing many times, is you never ever actually experience what is out there, which means you never experience your husband, your wife, your children, your boss, and so on. You experience your thinking about your boss, your children, your wife, and so on. We will go into more detail on that. But first, I want to share with you one my favorite metaphor. When the first time, it's supposed to be a very ancient metaphor, sorry, but uh, the first time I heard it, I was, uh, I love it a lot because this is what all of us human beings do, okay? This metaphor is one day, you, in your house, you want to drive out with your car and you accidentally drop your car keys and suddenly the whole house become pitch black, okay? And you can't find your car keys in the house because it's totally dark. Then suddenly, you saw there's a bright street light outside because street light not affected by you know, different line. And you walk out, under the street light, you look for your car keys. After a while, your neighbor came out and helped you to look for the car keys. But after half an hour, he felt something not right. And he looked at you and asked, where did you drop your car keys? And you said, in the house. And your neighbor asked, why are you searching under the street light? Well, because it's bright here. So similarly, it's easier for us to blame the people out there, my boss, my kid, my children, my finances and all that for, for our problems. A bit not so easy to see that all our problems come from our thinking about all this because then it points to this person here. And then we, we don't want to point to this person. But I want to show you that it's not your fault also. Okay, when you can accept that all problems created from here, but it's not your fault, then you get a lot of uh, joy and happiness and you will live in a, a different world. Same world, but different as in you see things differently. Okay. Now, um, so, you, so you don't need any effort. Okay. And another analogy I like to give is when you're in a hurry, you want to open the door, you try to push the door open and pull the door and try all sorts of ways and it doesn't open. You get very frustrated and then suddenly you realize that it's a sliding door and you just slide and it opens. No one needs to tell you how to open the door. You just need to know it's a sliding door and you'll be able to push it open. Similarly, the same. 
someone just needs to point you to the correct direction of how life works, you don't need any effort. The, the, thing, the effort you need is to look. That's all. Okay, but you need at least to have the interest to look. So now, uh, Woon, sorry, we can have the slide. Okay. Uh... But this okay, stuff from here. Yeah, yeah. First slide is do you see a triangle, a white triangle in the middle? If those who see, just raise your hand. You can either raise a real hand or digital hand, a triangle in the, a white triangle in the middle. Okay. Yeah. So most people do see the white triangle in the middle. But Actually, look carefully. There is no white triangle in the middle. It's because the, the triangle with line is broken and the three round circles are broken. It gives you the illusion that there's a white triangle in the middle. Can you all see that? Yeah, so it's an illusion. So actually, our whole life is the same we project what we, our past experience, stories, background, our beliefs into what we see outside, into what we hear outside. And we experience that. We don't experience the triangle there or the picture there. We experience our projection of all our ideas, concepts of what we see. Okay, so we are experiencing our thinking. Okay, next, next slide, please. Okay, this slide is an old slide. Most people might have seen it. Um, does those people who see an old woman, uh, just raise your hand. Okay, those people who see, put down your hand. Those people who see a young woman, raise your hand. Okay, now put down your hand. Finally, those people who see both old and young women, Raise your hand. Okay. Okay, so most of you, a lot of you have uh, see old and uh, young women, okay? You can, those who have, they don't see, you can ask other people because it's a, a very old uh, picture. But I just want to show you actually, actually really, there is no old woman or young woman. They are just lines. From the lines, we make up old woman and young woman. If a dog were to see this, if a tiger were to see this, they don't see young woman and old woman. They see lines. So it's again our ideas, our perception that bring out. We put stories into what we see. We put stories into what we hear. And we feel and experience it. So that's why we scare ourselves. We create a lot of stories on what we see and hear scary stories, anxious stories, and then we experience it ourselves. Same, exactly the same as our dream. Okay, next, next slide. So, one of the important things to see in Dharma is Paticca Samupada, dependent origination. The Buddha say, Yo Paticca Samupadang Pasati, so Dhamma Pasati. Yo Dhamma Pasati, so Paticca Samupadam Pasatiti. One who sees dependent origination sees the Dharma. One who sees the Dharma sees dependent origination. This is in Majjhima Nikaya, Mahapati Padopama Sutta, which is the greater discourse on the elephant footprint. So everything arises based on condition. The word, the samsara relief, is based on condition. What you see, what you hear, is conditioned by your background, your opinion, your concept, and so on. So you are actually, in one aspect, I'm just showing you one small aspect of dependent origination. There are many aspects. One aspect is you are living depending on your perception of the world, your thinking of the world. You are not experiencing the world. You're experiencing your thinking about the world. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, this is the 12 links of uh, dependent origination, which most of you are aware. I won't go into the detail. I want to show only a few links. The translation is uh, using uh, Bante Punyaji, which I prefer because 
his translation is closer to um, the, the real meaning of uh, what the Pali intend to. Okay, the normal translation we have can give sometimes a, a little bit of a misconception. So I prefer his translation. Um, I won't go through all the 12 links. So we'll go to the next, next slide. Uh, before, okay, before we go to the next slide, sorry. Um, I want to show that, why I show that picture is that these 12 things, we have also another misconception. We think that one arises after another. It's not. They arise together. That's why there's the word antecedental concurrence. They arise at the same time, the 12, 12 things. But it's logically is one after another. Okay, you ask me what do you mean by that? One, two, two arises after one, but two is always there. You cannot say two in terms of time, two is not behind one. In terms of space, two is not behind one also. But in terms of logic, it is. So similarly for this, in terms of logic, avijja first, then sankara. But in terms of time and space, they arise together. Okay, next slide, sorry. Okay, okay, we start with number three, okay? Vinyana. Vinyana, Pante Punyaji translate as perception, how we perceive things, okay? So from, and this perception is colored or you can say tainted by our background, beliefs, opinions, and so on. So from our perception, when we see or hear things, we construct Nama Rupa. Basically, it's, Nama is basically name, Malay, we know, rupa, rupa bentuk, the form. So we see a something in front of us, let's say a, a pen, then we would, we would say, you know, we would call this pen, okay? So we see a form and then we give it a name. And this name is again back based on our background. So again, it's created by us. Then salayatana, the sixth sense, we add more information from just seeing, from hearing, smelling, tasting. If we have a pen in front of us, we would smell it and all that and create a story. So it becomes actually a 6D stories. That's why it's very difficult for us to get out. Imagine if you go to a movie and watch a 3D movie, you're already screaming if it's a ghost movie. Now it's a 6D movie, but it's created by you, okay? By your, all your six senses. Now, Pasa, he translated as, um, the cognition, basically, I will explain it as when all your six senses comes together, it creates this world. You can use, normally we translate as some contact as in when, when all these six senses comes into contact with the world, it creates a world. And, but this world is created from your thoughts, from you, okay, from your six senses. And that is what you're going to experience. You're not experiencing the world out there, you're experiencing this, what, your six senses tell you. And I will show you also mainly the six senses, mainly is your, your mind because the, the other sense door is only very short time. Okay, when you form this world, then you have three feelings, pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. Okay, ne now next slide, please. Okay, I like the next one, Tanha. Tanha normally, uh, next two actually, Tanha normally is translated as uh, craving, but craving doesn't give the idea because what if it is an unpleasant uh, feeling? You don't have cra craving for unpleasant feeling. So Bande Punyaji translates as emotional reaction. When you have pleasant, unpleasant, you will have emotional reaction. Whether you like, dislike, or neither like nor dislike, okay? Next one, very important. When you have this emotional reaction, then the eye comes up, personalization. So he don't translate as clinging, he translate as personalization. You personalize it. I like this book. I don't like this book. Now I is formed. And again, it's an illusion. This illusion is formed through this, from your, you perceiving the world, feeling it. And then when you experience it, the eye comes out. Then number 10, the bawa, you come into existence, the self is form now. But doesn't mean there's no self. There's no real, substantial, solid self. There is an illusory self created by your thoughts. Illusion is very powerful. Don't 
thing when I say illusion uh, means it's nothing. Illusion, very powerful. Our whole world is an illusion, like I show you just now about the triangle. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, this is important. So when we see something, actually the process, this one we are very familiar in our uh, science when we are maybe secondary, I'm not sure. So when you see something like a leaf here, the light is reflected, go into our retina, and then the image actually is, is quite interesting. It's upside down. Then we put it you know, on the right, uh, turn it back up. And then based on our background opinions, belief, like maybe you know, when we see kids playing computer game and we have this idea computer game is no good, then we would add all this information and story to that image. Okay, just a sidetrack. Actually, you know, I'm not saying computer, playing computer game is good or bad, but now it's a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar industry. You know, if you enter a competition, you, you win, you can get you know, up to uh, millions of dollars. So anyway, when you see this image, you actually, like the leaves here, you actually form your own opinion story and can be a lot of story. I have this leaf, I bought this leaf and I have similar leaf and so on. And then you experience that, that whole story that you created. So you don't experience the leaf, you experience your story about the leaf. So it makes a lot of difference. That means what you experience is your thinking. And so, which means that all your problems in life can only come from your thinking, not from out there, because this is what you experience. Okay, next um, slide, please. Okay, this, for those who are interested in Abhidhamma, this is uh, the sense door uh, process, Chitta Vitti. Um, for the rest who are not uh, familiar with Abhidhamma, Abhidhamma, no problem. Just see that the three black one is the process in the mind, okay, before the object comes into you, getting ready to have uh, a contact with the object. And then the green color is where either your eye, the sense door, eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body comes into contact with whatever object in the world. And then the rest are processing in the mind. So you can see it's only one mind moment that it hits your either your eye, ear, and so on. The rest are all operating in your mind. And after this is over, the last one you see registering consciousness, then it's followed by mind door process and billions of mind door process. That means in, in a minute, only once of a billion of time, it's only your eye, ear, nose is in contact with information outside. The rest of the time is processing in your, in your mind and you're adding a lot of stories there, okay? Now, um, next slide, please. Okay, so this one, unfortunately, I forgot where I get this information from. Um, but supposedly, every moment we see 400 bits of data, even that small time we contact, we only process 2,000 bits. Okay, this is equivalent to, you come into contact, experience 600,000 pages uh, of, of books, not pages and reduce to only a few pages. The rest, you throw away all the information. And definitely we know we only see a small range of light spectrum, a small range of frequency. And we think this is reality because you only capture a small amount of what you experience. And then you add a lot of story and you think I am seeing the reality. So you can, from this, you can see that everyone who lives in the same world experience totally different reality. That's why we have quarrel and we have, we have war. Because we add a lot of information, we only take small amount of information to process. Next slide, please. Okay, so we do not see things as they are. We see things, see all the things as we are. Okay, so if you can remember this, we will pause next time if we think that there's someone out there who is the one who scares us or make us frustrated or give us problem. Okay, next slide, please. This is from a physicist, David Bohm. And I love this quote. Thoughts, this is what he said. Thoughts create the world and then says, I didn't do it, not me. No, see, this is what happened to us. It's our thoughts that create the whole world out there for us to experience. 
And then we say, you know, it's not me, it's the people out there here and so on and this thing and so on. Okay, next slide. And this is a scientist who say that. Next slide, please. So all the circumstances, people, things that happen and our emotion, there is a link in between called thoughts, which we ignore. Okay, and this is what I want, I hope I invite you all to explore. The next time when you're angry, when you're sad, when you're frustrated, even when you're happy, try to see that it's not due to the circumstances, people and things. They might stimulate a bit, but it's the thoughts you're thinking. But it doesn't mean thoughts are bad. It's very powerful, creative tool. Okay, next slide, please. So thoughts is, thoughts is not a problem. The problem is not that you have thoughts. The problem is that you listen to them and you give credence, you agree with them. A thought without credence is a balloon without air. Okay, so you, you have no problems if you don't believe in your thoughts. Okay, next, next slide, please. So thoughts are like rainbow. It looks very real. It's there, but it's not there really. You can't put rain, take rainbow and bring it home. So similarly, whatever you experience, if you can understand it's, it's a, like a rainbow, then we won't hold on it to it so much. We can still enjoy it. We enjoy rainbow. So nothing wrong with the illusion. We enjoy rainbow, but we don't have this idea that I want to keep this rainbow at home so that next time I can enjoy it. We don't. We happily enjoy the rainbow. And when it disappears, we are not sad. A little bit sad maybe, but we, are not, we don't cry away that much. Okay, next slide, please. So we feel our thoughts, not our circumstances. And next slide. This, these slides are just to re, reinforce our understanding. So please try to explore yourself. Okay, next slide, please. So, but feelings and thoughts are two sides of the same coin. Okay, so when you have a sad feeling or angry feeling, don't waste it. It's indicating that you have sad thoughts or angry thoughts. Then you, what you have to do is not hold on to the thoughts. You don't need any effort to stop them because thoughts are impermanent. As long as you don't hold on to it, it will stop by itself. The only problem for us is we think it's real, we believe it, we hold on to it, and then we continue to make ourselves angry by thinking angry thoughts. We continue to make ourselves anxious by thinking anxious thoughts and scary thoughts and so on. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, we finish with the slide. This one is for later. We can end the slide show first, uh, Woon. Thanks. Okay, so um, I'll continue on a little bit more to show you okay so now i've shown you that your whole world is an illusion or story created by yourself but remember illusion is not nothing so you might ask me this question do you mean i created all my problems you might get very upset it's like you know i'm the one who create all my problems so my answer to you is yes and no, okay? The analogy is if you have a dog and your dog destroyed your neighbor's beautiful garden, are you responsible for the destruction of the garden? Yes. But did you destroy your neighbor's garden? No. So you are sort of like the, the thoughts belong to you. You are, like, you are in charge of the dog, but you also cannot control the dog. Can you really control? Sort of. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So you can't fully control your, your dog. Same, you can't fully control your thoughts. Okay? So I'm not asking you to control your thoughts. The, your thoughts are all not real. They're stories made up of, by you. Stories of maybe beautiful stories of disaster, disappointment, frustration, pain, and so on. They are just a, like a mirage that looks like water there but really there's no water so all i ask you to do is to explore to see to not blindly believe in your thoughts your thoughts are like a uh, advisor in your company 
if your advisor always give you wrong advice, what do you do? Sack the advisor immediately. Okay. So I'm asking you to explore. Okay. To explore that your whole life at this moment, you are believing and living and working according to the advice of an advisor who gives you wrong advice. And if you see, just like in a dream, if you see that it's just a dream, then it doesn't affect us so much. It still affects us a little bit, but it doesn't affect us so much. It doesn't mean that you will not have anger anymore. It doesn't mean that you won't have sadness anymore. It only means that the next time you're angry, you are sad, or you're frustrated, you know you are the one who is scaring yourself. You are the one who is making yourself angry and you don't have to continue. And if you continue, you know that because you, are not, you didn't see it and you will be more compassionate towards yourself and others. You will be able to also see more compassionate towards others because you can see that they didn't know. They didn't know. In fact, you can say that every human is innocent because human beings don't know that they already have the happiness inside them. They think that they need to get the happiness from outside, which they can't because you don't experience the world out there anyway. So human didn't know because of this ignorance. So human suffer and you have much more compassion when you see this. And this ignorance, you always think, me, same, like most, I guess most of you, we always think that ignorance is like something very difficult. Maybe another hundred lives we will understand about ignorance. No, ignorance is just not knowing where our experience comes from, not knowing where our happiness and sadness come from. It comes from within, not from out there. And that is the ignorance, not something complicated that a three-year or four-year-old boy can't understand. Everyone can understand. But it's a matter of whether we are willing to open our heart to accept and explore. You have to explore. I keep emphasizing this exploring because it doesn't help by you even blindly believing it in me. Every time you explore and you see this reality, it will strengthen your confidence. Okay? Now, um, okay. Another thing to show, to, to remind you about the thinking is you, there's no way you can try to manage your thinking, okay? Of course, there's many uh, teachers who teach positive thinking. I'm not against positive thinking, but when you have this positive thinking attitude, which means that you already believe your thinking is real, Otherwise, you wouldn't try to program yourself with positive thinking. Once you believe your thinking is real, sorry, negative thinking, you also think is real. So thinking starts to affect you. But if you understand, not by believing, by seeing, by recognizing that all your thinking doesn't matter, positive or negative, are uh, all stories made up by you, then you are free and you will live in a different world with freedom. But it takes time because there will be different perspectives, different angles where you get stuck, okay? It might be easier for you to see that whatever my boss say, I don't get angry because of what my boss say. It's because of what I think my boss say. This one, you maybe you'll be able to see, okay? You might be able to see that it's not my neighbor that caused me anger. It's what the neighbor, what I think the neighbor say, but... This is uh, one quite interesting. This is uh, when this was shared. This is a very big movement in America where they share this idea that your, your experience comes from your thinking, not from the outside world. One coach says when he started sharing with his client, one of his client's first reaction is, yes, everything I experience comes from my thinking, not from the outside world, except money and my wife. It's definitely money that caused me problem. And it's definitely my wife, not my thinking about money, not my thinking about the wife. But later on, when he explored, he also saw that. So we have our own blind spot. Okay. So you need to explore from different angles, different uh, parts of your life. That's the work you have to do. 
it's not hard work as in you need to memorize a lot of things. It's work as in you could, you could need to see from different angle. And when you can see it, you actually laugh at yourself. There's a lot of fun, a lot of joy. And I've heard friends which I share with this where they think, you know, one lady was sharing last night that she was very anxious because her daughter has a lot of things coming up, have exams, birthday parties, and so on. And she was totally anxious on how her daughter is going to cope. A lot of thinking in her mind. And then suddenly she realized that her daughter was very relaxed. Like nothing is happening. The person who is involved is like, you know, exams coming up, friends, birthday party, and excitement and all that. She was like just you know, sitting down very relaxed. So the anxiety comes from her thinking, not from the situation out there. But once you're trapped in there, have compassion for yourself, not so easy for you to see. So how to get out when you are totally trapped in there? There are a few things you could do, okay? But the best is, of course, if you could see it immediately. Once you see it, once you see it's a dream, then there's no problem with the dream. But if you can't see that it's a dream, when you're in a dream, what, some way you can, you can help you lessen the, 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 the fear in the dream is like her, she go for a walk to calm herself down. If you go for a walk on the forest, on the beach, or maybe look at stars and so on, somehow it has a calming effect. But I want to remind you again, the calmness that you get when you walk on the beach, on the forest and all that, it's not from the forest, not from the beach, it's already in you. It's just that when you walk in the forest, when you walk on the beach, you are not thinking, you are not lost in your thinking. When you are not lost in your thinking, your natural calmness, your natural peace comes out. But this natural calm and peace is always there, 100% of the time. Even when you are anxious, even when you are struggling. I give you this, you, again, please try to explore this. Okay? And this is very important. Um, there is, a, again, another coach in Canada, Canadian coach, who shared this, and I, I love this story. One time when he was very anxious, his daughter was in the ICU, very anxious, lots of thinking and all that. But when he don't get lost in those thinking, he realized that there is peace and calm at the background. There's always this peace and calm in the background 24-7. It's just that we never pay attention to it. So again, I invite you, two things. One, to explore, to see where your feelings or emotions come from. Another one, to explore that you have this peace, natural peace and calmness all the time, 24-7. Okay? Now, um, again, back to the thoughts. Okay, some tools to help you. Okay, so I've, I've shared with you directly the, the way for you to see, okay, which is to see directly that all you're experiencing is created by your thoughts. Don't blame yourself. Once you can see through it, if you can clearly see through it, you won't, what I call, continue slapping yourself. Okay, because, and even if you continue slapping yourself, it's not so painful. Because uh, I realized this recently when I got the acupressure guy who cured my coughing. He pressed the points where, where you have problems is very painful. But when I try to press myself, not so painful. Because very difficult for you to try to injure yourself. So similarly, when you can really see that you are scaring yourself, you are making yourself angry, you are slapping yourself, it's harder for you to slap yourself and... Uh, Scare yourself, okay? Try scaring yourself. I don't, I don't think it works. Or try tickling yourself. It, it, somehow it doesn't work. So just by seeing, you will solve the problem. But it takes uh, a little bit of uh, effort and willingness to have an open mind to try to see. So some hints, some uh, suggestions that might help you. First thing, of course, uh, don't try to control your thoughts, okay? Because thoughts like magician, and this is not what I say, okay? The Buddha, when he compare our five aggregates, 
to the uh, when he talk about the five aggregates, when he give a simile, he said that our consciousness, which is how our, we perceive things, he equated to a magician. Okay, so our thoughts are very fast. And I didn't realize it, I was told, actually the trick the magicians do to you is done before you will even enter the room. It's not the hand is faster than your eyes. He's already set up in such a way that it's an illusion on the stage already. So by the time you come in, you, there's no way, no matter how fast your mind, your eyes is, you can't catch the illusion. So same with your thoughts. Just regard your thought is the A-class number one magician in the world. You can't try to outbeat it. The only thing you can do is enjoy the show, number one, or take it as a show. Okay. So now your question is, Bante, what if negative thoughts keep coming? You know, and I can't see that uh, it's, I'm the one who created it. Well, I give you an analogy. Do you experience a time when you walk into a shopping complex and a music that you totally hate keep playing? This music keep playing and playing. Do you ever walk up to the command center and ask them, can you change that music? We never do that. You just ignore the music. You continue shopping. After a while, you don't even notice the music is on and you're happily buying your things, totally happy with your shopping, totally engrossed in your shopping. Because you didn't pay attention to the, to the music. Similarly, the reason you are lost in your negative thought is because you pay attention to it. You think it's real. You think you need to act on it. That's why you are caught. So same thing. Okay. Same when you walk into a room with very loud air conditioning noise. Again, after a while, if you ignore it, you might not notice it anymore. Okay. But you might ask, Bante, what about physical injuries and sickness? What if I have real sickness? Okay. And I would like to tell you that actually you'll be surprised. It's the same. And this is not what I say. In the text, there's Buddha did mention that there is two arrows when you have when you have sickness or suffering. One is the pain in the body, and this is my favorite quote: "Pain is sometimes unavoidable, but suffering is always always optional. You don't have to suffer the mental suffering. the The body pain sometimes unavoidable. Okay, so similarly, it's like our mind actually adds the effect onto the pain and it adds like if you watch a raw ghost movie you are not scary at all without any soundtrack when you add the soundtrack suddenly it becomes very scary you know because of the sound effect in there so similarly i give you a very good example is the last time i had a frozen shoulder i'm not saying that it's not painful but the pain changes when my thinking, I, if my thinking goes to my shoulder is very painful, maybe there's a fracture, maybe cancer is coming. It becomes extremely painful. But if my thinking changed to, there is a sharp sensations in the shoulder, let's go and see a doctor. Somehow the pain is different, very different. So again, I ask you all to explore you can change your relationship with your pain. You can't change the pain. It's sometimes unavoidable, but changing your relationship with the pain, and especially when it can get you into a calm mind, it's much, much helpful to you. You can, if you solve that pain, you will be able to make the right decision what to do with it, okay? And another maybe story that from here I want to share with you is even difficult situations we have, okay? Um, this story I shared many times with my mom when she was diagnosed with fourth stage cancer. I didn't get tired at all because my mind is like, what to do next? Get this natural healing, Western doctor, this herb and so on. It's only one day when I sat down and think, why does this happen to me? Why does this happen to my mom? What more can I do? Did I do enough? And so on. And I become very tired. And when I don't pay attention to that thoughts, the thoughts 
don't continue anymore. And again, my tiredness fatigue don't come anymore. I can continue doing what needs to be done. So it doesn't mean that when we don't get lost in our thinking, we cannot do anything. We actually function much, much better. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's much more helpful if we don't get lost in our thinking. Now, back to the physical pain. Again, try to remember back or see other people when someone is involved in a game, either basketball or whatever, football and so on, when they are injured, actually they didn't realize it. It's only after the game over, when they look at their leg, it's bleeding, they say, oh, my leg is bleeding, it's very painful. But when they are playing the game, they don't feel it at all. So again, it's our mind that adds the extra effect into the pain in the body and add the more pain, extra pain, the uh, ketchup and the tomato sauce and the pepper and so on. So again, it's our very brilliant creative force of our thought. It's not bad. It's just that we use it wrongly. We become a servant to, to the thoughts. So thoughts actually, again, I want to stress that thoughts are not bad. Otherwise, you know, uh, I don't want to give a bad publicity to thoughts. Thoughts need to do some PR also that it's a powerful creative tool that we can use. We can use to create many things, okay? If you use, you become a master to the thoughts instead of a servant to the thoughts, okay? Um, okay. Now. So. Now I want to ask you, like at this moment, do you have any problems? Okay. You will only have problems when you start thinking. After this talk, how can I settle my bills? How can I solve my problems at work tomorrow and so on? All these stories, and we cannot, we are not designed actually to solve the stories in our, in our head. Okay. We are only made for reality. So if anything needs to be done, actually we are very good at doing it. If we are at present, at the present moment. If you need to pay bills, we can just pay it. If no money, we can go out and earn. Actually, we are extremely powerful and resourceful and resilient. The, the, the mind knows what to do to, to find itself the best way to solve things. Okay? Even kids, I'll be quite surprised um, because my, nowadays, you know, we are very fortunate in Malaysia. Most of the house have maids. So when I was at my, years ago, when I was at brother's home, I was wondering, you know, the kids, everything, washing dishes and all that, they would ask, kaka, everything, you know, clean the floor, kaka. I was thinking, how are they going to grow up? Because when, when, when we were young, our mother, parents made us, you know, do all the cleaning and so on. So if you grow up like this, how are you going to survive in the world? But somehow they do. When the daughter reach a certain age, she knows how to take care of the house, the family. When the, when the maid goes back you know, to Indonesia, she takes over all the washing of clothes and cooking and so on. Somehow, children know what to do at the right time, the right place. But of course, slowly we got to share with them the right values, not lecture. Okay? Nowadays, it doesn't work in the modern world. You can't lecture to tell them what to do. We ourselves has to be an example. When we change ourselves, the people around us will feel the good vibes and they will ask us, what happened to you? I also want to learn that. That's how we help other people. Not by telling them, okay, um, kids sit down now in front of me. Yesterday, I learned a very good dharma from Bande Nyaninda. Now, please listen and do exactly as I told you. It, it doesn't work. Okay, you will make them run away and they will never want to. They will say, please don't mention another word about Dharma, another word of, about Bandina Ninda. So um, we have to practice ourselves. Okay. Now, how to, you will know how when you're lost in your thinking. When you're lost in your thinking, you will get like very heavy and so on. When you are 
not lost in your thinking, when you fall out of the story, you will feel very light feeling in you. So you can tell from your feeling. Okay, if you ask me, Bante, you know, how do I know whether I am in my intuition, in my innate wisdom, or I'm lost in my thinking? You know through your feeling. But you can't try to grasp, try to uh, get that feeling. Because that feeling of calm and peacefulness, it's always there. It's not for you to get, to grasp, to, to, uh, to search for. It's only when you're not lost in your thinking, then you'll be back into this calm, peaceful state of mind. And you can't force your mind to not to, to get out from thinking. You can't think your way out of thinking. Okay? The only way is not believe in it and let it run until it goes over. In fact, you can even enjoy it if you know, you know. You just enjoy as you enjoy a movie. You don't go to a movie to see the projector. You go to the movie to get scared. You get to the, go to the movie to, to cry. Okay. In fact, uh, you'll be surprised. Uh, every time I watch a movie, emotional movie, I cry. Okay. So that's why, to me, movie is a very good analogy of our life. Because same, in, the, in our normal life, we cry when we get emotional. But that emotion comes from our thinking. Same like in a movie, in a cinema, there's nothing, you're just watching a, a screen or even at home in your TV, you're just watching a screen and yet you can cry, you can laugh and you can feel suspense and you can feel anxious by just watching, watching things moving on the screen. So same in your daily life, you are actually watching or experiencing a 6D version of the movie. So be compassionate because 6D, very difficult for us to see it's an illusion. But if you keep trying to see, one day you will realize that it's illusion because there will be something not so right there that makes you see that mm, definitely this is not 100% real. Okay? But you, it takes some time. So you, you have to be persistent, but it's fun. Okay? I'm not asking you to sit there not moving for 10 hours, or I'm not asking you to learn a different language. I'm asking you to explore with fun to see where your emotions come from. So um, it's not something which is uh, very uh, boring to do, okay? Um, and you can turn all your poison into medicine, all your problems into solution. Okay. Um, Okay, I want to show, I have time. Um, I won't go too long. Maybe we want to leave some time for question and answer. Okay, so I want to show, uh, very quickly go to this story. I won't go very detailed into this story, um, but this is an extreme case. So that at least uh, to motivate you to, to, to see how powerful your, our thoughts are, okay? Then after that, I will go through the rest of the slides and maybe some time for question and answer. So very quickly, I will summarize the story. <laughs> this is my favorite story. If you want to find where the story comes from, it's uh, a book called Mind Over Medicine by Lisa Rankin. She's a doctor. Oh, yeah, she's a doctor. But now she trains uh, other doctors in terms of uh, how the mind works. Okay, so this... Story, real story, okay, not, not artificial story. It's a 1957 case study about a doctor called Dr. Philip West and a patient called Mr. Wright. And this patient actually have a final stage of cancer, limb cancer. And it has uh, this, you know, the neck, armpits and all that were filled with tumors. And the tumor was size of orange juice. So very big tumors all over the body. And in fact, his chest was filled with two liters of milky fluid every day. He got to drain it out. And he was expected, he can't last a week. But somehow this Mr. Wright was very desperate to, to leave. Again, the mind, okay? And he heard there's a new type of drug called creoboison, uh, which maybe can help. But the doctor says that the uh, drug company only want to test on people who has a chance to leave. It's, it's quite sad. It's an 
there's no chance for him to live anymore. He only have a week, only for people who has like three months more or so on. But this guy didn't give up. He keep begging the doctor and so on. So since you no, know, he, he can't you know, uh, reject him. So the doctor injected Krabosin to him, but he think you know, he's not going to last the weekend. But surprisingly, three days later, the patient walk out of bed, Dr. Wright. And according to you know, the, the research paper, Mr. Wright, his, the tumor size melted like snowballs on hot stove and were half the original size immediately after three days. 10 days after the first dose of cryboison, Mr. Wright left the hospital totally cancer-free, just 10 days, okay? And I want to show you how powerful the mind on the other side also, okay? Placebo and nocebo. So what happens was Mr. Wright was praising how great this cryboison is, miracle drug for two months, until he read a magazine saying the government, this is all true story. The scientific magazine saying cryboison actually is not so effective. It's actually fake marketing. When this guy read it, immediately his heart sank and his, the cancer came back immediately. Totally all the tumors come back at orange juice size. He went back to the same doctor and this doctor has this idea, becomes a bit cheeky. He thought first time, it's not something to do with the, with the drug and he got cured. So this time I'm going to inject him with water and see what happens. So the doctor inject him with water nothing, just you no know, salt water. And surprisingly, again, he was totally healed. Walk out of the hospital, totally healed. So you can see we are actually experiencing the mind. But I'm not asking you don't go and see a doctor, okay? Please, please, when you are not well, please go and see a doctor. This is exceptional, rare, extreme case. But yet, I just want to show you an extreme case so that you can see how powerful the illusion the mind created. But the story didn't end there, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. Because uh, Mr. Wright later on read that actually all the drugs, don't know which, whichever batch of cryboson produced by this company is not effective at all. You know, there's no effective drug at, at all. So all are not effective. When he read that, he totally heartbroken. And again, the cancer come back. This time, he passed away. So, but it's not important whether he passed away or not because this is in 1957. Important thing is to show that he can swing from one side to another so quickly because of our mind. Okay, we will finish with the other slides. Okay, um, Woon, we will show the rest of the slides. I'll explain. Okay, I want to show you a face of a baby, why? Because we are born happy. I keep emphasizing this because people keep asking me, Bante, how can we be naturally happy when uh, we have so much problems in the world? We are born happy. Babies don't need psychiatric treatment. Have you ever found, tell me, you know, let me know, email me or text me if you found a baby that's in depression. There's no baby that's in depression because we are born happy. And in fact, if you can't be happy, look at a baby you'll be happy, okay? You will be able to um, touch back the natural happiness that we have, all of us already have inside us. So this is one point. The other point I keep stressing just now is about where our emotion come from, from our thoughts. Another thing is our innate peace, happiness, contentment that's already in there. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. How to help you, this one is another, we did it just now in the morning, okay? To think of the last time you feel the way you feel, you could feel all the time, you wish you could feel all the time, you feel that feeling without the story, then maintain that feeling, okay? We did it in the morning. Easier if you close your eyes to think of a feeling that you wish you could feel all the time, maintain that feeling, then when you open your eyes, you try to maintain this feeling, okay? No effort, okay? If you need effort, then um, relax yourself, okay? Don't do anything with uh, willpower and effort, 
Okay, that, then it's uh, two strainers and your body will reject or your mind also will reject. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so important is look within you. All the answers is inside you. But you ask me, what do you mean by within? It's look at the formless that is before form. Okay, before, <laughs> before you form an idea of the guy in front of you, there is this silence, there is this space. So look at the silence before thought. One exercise that sometimes I ask people to do is um, when you read books, sometimes try to look at the, the blank page behind the words. Without the, that white paper, you can't have words. Okay. Same when you are in a room, try to look at the space between people. Without the space, you can't have things in that space. So when you are aware of the space instead of the things in the space, when you're aware of the blank page instead of the writings, you will live more in the space of formless before the form. Okay, next slide, please. Energy flows where your attention goes, wherever we focus on expand. So if you focus your energy, your attention is on the outside, that's where your energy will flow. And you will make it as if real, that the monster is really real and make the monster bigger. If you put your energy inside, then you will realize that you have this natural calm and you are the one who create what's out there. So when you, when also when you focus on this natural calm, it will expand, it will become more. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, I love this, okay, um, about silent mind. This is the, the peace of mind that I talk about, okay? So when I read this, try to not uh, understand the words. Try to feel or look at where the words point to, okay? Silent mind. Silent mind is not a mind without noise. Silent mind is not a mind without thoughts. Silent mind is the space within which experiences or thoughts come and go. Silent mind is the space where sound comes and go. Silent mind is the space between letters that allow us to read the words. Silent mind is that which is always present underneath our thinking. Okay, so I invite you all to explore, to dwell more on this silent mind. Okay, next slide, please. I think we are, silence isn't empty, it's full of answers. When you are in your silent mind, you will know what to do. And uh, I think that's, uh, Woon, is that the last slide? I think it's the last slide. Oh, okay, there's an ending. Okay, leave this ending one. So I hope you would uh, explore about this silent mind that's always there. When you dwell in this silent mind, you would know what to do in different circumstances. Okay, even when you're in crisis, you will know what to do. Um, very quick story is one American coach, when the son was in an accident in ICU, they were very lost in their thinking. But once they realized that they're lost in thinking, they're not continuing with their thinking and dwell in a silent mind. Suddenly, they started singing to, for the kids. And when they started singing, they saw his heartbeat was erratic, suddenly become stable because it's very soothing for him. So we know what to do. We don't need to plan, no need to think what to do. But when we are in this silent and calm peace of mind, our innate wisdom will tell us to do what needs to be do, done at the right place, right time. So two important things. All our emotions are reflection of our thoughts. All of us have natural health and innate flow of wisdom. Okay, I will end the sharing here. Thank you, Bhante. Uh, brothers and sisters in the Dharma, uh, any questions uh, from our attendees here? I saw one uh, question from the uh, chat box. Chat box. Okay, sorry, I, I missed that. Can you please repeat? I read out. Again? I read out a question from the chat box. Okay, okay. Uh, so, Bhante, rejoice to know Bhante is well and recovering from cough. <laughs> 
my friend would like to know how to overcome her fear and her body always shiver out of fear and be and belittled with aggressive when belittled with aggressive yeah, people. Yeah. Oh, Bante can give some advice. Thank you. Okay. Um, actually, the best, the best, um, best way to solve it is to see that all her fear comes from her thinking about all these aggressive people. But of course, a bit difficult for her if you are trapped in there. Okay. So there are many other tools which I will share now. When you can't see that you are scaring yourself, uh, Buddha did give many tools. One is think of the virtues of the Buddha. Okay? When you think of the virtues of the Buddha, you have a certain amount of uh, confidence and uh, protection. Or if you have faith in the Buddha, you can chant Namo Tassa, uh, Bhagavato Arato, Sama Sam Buddhasa. At least that, if you know it so and so on, okay, you can do that. Or you can just chant Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. Or you can play some um, Parita chanting. Or if you are more familiar with Mahayana chanting, that's fine. Any chanting that will suit you. Or if you are not a Buddhist, you are a Christian, um, any, you know, maybe a Christian sermons or hymns or whatever that, that can help the person. Um, then you need to borrow external strength if you can't see uh, directly. Okay. We have two questions for the attendees here, but uh, please allow me to hitchhiking on Bante's statement just now uh, that uh, using external help of chanting nine virtues of the nine attributes of the Buddha can help us in this type of situation. I want to make an advertisement. Yes, uh, Metalach will have this. Uh, Dharma study, Dharma study group, nine attributes of the Buddha. Uh, this is the first time we organize it. Uh, this is based on Sialis Se Sosila's book of the same title by going through the meanings of the Buddha's attributes. Practitioners will strengthen their faith by further understanding the Buddha's teachings. The study group will also practice Buddha Nusati meditation together. Recollecting the Buddha's virtues can inspire us to do good and help us gain better concentration, be more mindful of our body, speech, and mind. Uh, starting January 2022, uh, please contact uh, uh, Brother Lim Tuan Chit, <laughs> our chairman. Okay, thank okay, you, Bhante. To add on that, um, this is one very good way because it is in the text. Um, another way is uh, another person who have uh, confidence in Dharma, uh, Sorry, ask your friend to be with someone who has confidence, um, who have more confidence in their life. Okay, I'll explain then you know. Um, there are times in our life where our karma is low. Our karma is always up and down. Okay, when your energy or karma is low, it helps when you are with people who are energy or karma is high. So uh, do that also. Wise, uh, wise friends help. Okay. Uh, Joy, we give uh, our guests a uh, uh, privilege to ask a question first. Uh, Dharma, Pia, Le, May Yi, you may ask, uh, unmute and ask a question. Thank you, Otu Bante. Good Thank to you. see you. Happy that you are recovering from your cough. Actually, um, fully recovered. Oh, Sadhu Bante. Um, I think, yeah, I asked the question on behalf of my friend. I agree with Bante. I told her to chant Budo. But when confronting with an aggressive person, her mind just went like frozen and then her body shivered and then she become really little and you know she doesn't know like she's frozen so she can't do anything and yeah and i you know and the buddha doesn't help until the person aggressive person finished and left the room then she goes back to her normal her body stopped shivering so i don't know how to advise her further so um, perhaps Bante may able to give better advice. Thank you, Bante. Yeah, um, the best way again is if she could explore to see that when it might be difficult, okay? I know it's difficult, but to explore that her body freeze and all that, it's due to her thinking about the aggressive person. 
it's like she's thinking, oh, this aggressive person is thinking, is coming again, I'm very afraid of this person and so on. It, it's that thinking. But a bit difficult for her to see. Another way might help her before she, uh, her mind becomes stronger is maybe to avoid sometimes. Okay, but if cannot avoid, she got to learn to make her mind more resilient. It takes time. She can't expect now she start practicing to make her mind resilient. Tomorrow she'll be no problem with the, with the person. Yeah, but at least if she start today, slowly she, her mind will be more resilient. She, make her, she need to make her mind more resilient. Um, another way besides Budanusati is uh, metta. Mm. Yeah, if she has more metta from ourselves, then actually um, someone says, I agree also, uh, we think the opposite of love is hate. Actually, the opposite of love is also fear. Yeah, if we have love, we can accept love things, then we have less fear. It's because we don't have this love, unconditional love to accept all things. That's why we have this fear. So practicing metta will also help. Yes, thank you, Bante. I agree too. And Bante mentioned that, you know, um, since her karma, her energy is low and it's better with someone with, you know, good karma, you know, with wholesome yeah, karma. Wholesome. But then, you know, she can't be with Kayanamita all the time. So uh, it doesn't matter as long as as much time as she can, they will rub onto her. Okay. Right. Thank you, Wante. Secure too. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, Joanne, you may unmute and uh, this uh, your question. Yes, Wandami, Wante. Uh, glad that your cough has recovered. Uh, I my question will start with this: In our daily life, we tend to forget the jama and uh, react automatically in speech, action, and thoughts. Is there a technique that we can follow to use Dhamma in our daily drama? Um, if you ask me, um, okay, I, I have a pre-warning as in, uh, I, because I see Dhamma to the, I share with you what I see, okay, what I realize. Other people might see from different angle. They might realize different Dhamma. In Mahayana, they always say there is 84,000 doors to the Dhamma. So I always share the door I see. Doesn't mean that this is the only way. Mm. Okay. But it's the way that I see clearest and it's the way that I give me a big insight. So I will keep sharing and emphasizing this. So to me, it's, it doesn't matter whether you react or not. The next time when you are immediately react as you get very angry, uh, to me, it's not a problem. It's, a pro it's the thing is, are you quick enough after that like you get angry and then are you quick enough to have this idea to explore where this anger comes from? Or sadness or whatever. If you can, of course, it's good if you, are, if you are, are quick enough so that you don't say words that you regret later. But even if you say words that you regret later, don't blame yourself because again, like I say, thoughts are like magician. You didn't know it's not your fault. It's too quick. So you are thinking angry thoughts, that's why you're angry, so you say angry words. But since you already uh, get yourself in deep soup, as in poison, why don't you make use of the poison? See where did this poison come from and turn it into medicine. And if you keep seeing, one day you would be able to, uh, to see that all, the, all your anger and all that comes from your thinking. And then you'll be able to laugh at yourself. But doesn't mean you won't get angry anymore, okay? And I want to give you an example to, to let you show that it doesn't mean that you will become a saint immediately, okay? But it makes a lot of difference, okay? So there's this guy who is a best friend of a coach who shared this idea that our emotions, experience come from our thinking. And he had, this coach has been sharing for maybe 15 years, and his best friend has been with him for 15 years. So this best friend has learned this, you know, uh, really understand this principle. And one day this best friend says, you know, I'm really ups upset with myself that I fail. As in, you know, 
I, I thought I really understand that my emotions come from my thinking, but I fail totally. And this coach asked me, what do you mean you fail? He said, because the other day when there was uh, someone who was driving recklessly in front of me, I was very angry. And in fact, at the traffic light, they call it stop light in America. I stopped my car and opened my door and was about to go up and really scold the person. But when I opened my door, suddenly I caught myself in the anger and caught myself that my anger comes to my thinking and I stopped. Then the coach said, yeah, but what do you mean you fail? Yeah, but I thought if I understand this, I wouldn't get angry in the first place. He said, no, it doesn't make you a saint immediately. It's just that you will know where your anger comes from and you won't blame yourself too much and you won't blame other people. And you might be able to catch yourself sometimes faster, sometimes slower. But it's a very, even slower, never mind, because to me, it's a very powerful dharma because if you can catch yourself that everything, all your experience, emotions come from your thoughts, your thinking, then you can catch yourself that the, your whole world is created by you, including this guy, which means that there is no you. You realize anatta. There is no permanent you, which means that you are on the path to awakening, enlightenment, nibbana. So it's even though you are a bit late to, if you are angry and then you say the wrong words, but you realize after that, it's still you are moving closer towards the path, towards the, the final liberation and freedom. So I always keep emphasizing this because for me, it's, um, this is the big insight that I see. Okay, of course, there are other ways to make yourself less reactive and all that you can do Udhanusati, Metta, and so on. Okay, but I prefer the, the wisdom way to see directly because when you develop a lot of Metta, you know, that's good, but you might still be suppressing all your ignorance and all that. This one is immediately try to see your ignorance and penetrate through it immediately. Okay. Yes. I, I like shortcuts. But this shortcut is not short. <laughs> you still need to work. It's just that I bring you towards the end and then you still need to work towards it. Okay, next question. Yeah, thank you, Wante. Thank you, Wante. Uh, so, Joanne, you're on the right path. It's okay. Next question. So, our, any of our brothers, sisters here would like to ask a question. Uh, so, this uh, sister Rachel has uh, posted on our chat box on the link to the form to register for the nine attributes of the Buddha. You all can download from there. Uh, I think uh, at least 30 only uh, 30 people. <laughs> There's a limit uh, to the number of people that can, can register. Yes, any other questions from the. Uh, someone, SK. Brother SK. SK. Yes, SK can unmute and speak up. Yeah, good evening, uh, Bante. Uh, no, just, uh, um, just want to share uh, something rather than the question. Okay. I was very happy when you talked about that silent mind in which I wasn't aware of that silent mind. Um, I do um, quite often um, uh, in the practice, um, uh, always, uh, quite often, quite frequently, I always come back to my mind I, and to myself, and I always ask myself, what is my mind doing? What is my mind doing? Um, then uh, just now when you strike on with that slide about silent mind, uh, I realized that there is not actually thinking. Uh, when, when we ask our mind to see what, uh, now what am I my thinking? How is my what am I feeling? That sort of thing. I keep it there. Uh, in actual fact, it is uh, very calming for me most of the time. I and on, you normally do it. Uh, you normally do it when you are facing some difficulty. You know, job wise, uh, uh, you are you are you are feeling stress. You are you are uh, uh, having a crisis or something like that. Um, but I realized that. Um, uh, this is equally as good as meditation. Uh, just asking back the mind to do it. So um, in, that, in that sense, I think uh, uh, it's a good practice uh, uh, in which I'm, I'm trying to practice nowadays. Is that, you know, every, every, every now and then, you know, over the, over the day, you, it's just, just not mindfulness. It's just coming back to your mind and then come sit down there for five minutes and then tell you uh, what is your mind doing? What is your mind doing? 
and uh, and that's how this is shared to you. And I realized that just now when you use the word silent mind, that's that's comes, you know, that 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 that's give me the 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 uh, uh realize that this is what basically I'm doing. Thank you, Vante. Thank you, brother. SK. Uh, we may be able to allow for another one questions, one question. Abante, just now in that case of uh, Mr. Uh, Wright, uh, he, when given whether placebo or medication, did respond to the medication. So does that mean actually it's a positive mind, positive mind that helping him uh, to control the, uh, the cancer? Yes, but the negative mind kills him also. So the problem is, that's why I'm saying that uh, positive thinking is not bad, but you must remember if you believe positive thinking is good, that means you believe that your thinking is real. Then when mm. negative thinking comes, you also believe that that is real. Mm. You can't take one side of a coin. Mm. Yeah, if you, you take positive, you have to take the negative. So you, you, then you are in trouble. Bante, last question from the chat box. Uh, Bante, how we should react on the spot when facing aggressive person? Usually, I remain silent and observe my body and feeling on the spot. Is it okay to find out a way or a skill or a communication technique to deal with an aggressive person? Uh, but by thinking the technique I use to make up story, make up story to, yeah. to deal with the um, situation. Actually, you can if you want to use technique away, but every situation is different. Every single person is different. A technique that works this time might not work the next time. So uh, a bit difficult that way. The best way, I, again, I feel is when you are in the silent mind, that means when your mind is calm, peaceful, you will know what to do. It might be to say something, it might be not to say something. Okay, It might not necessarily remain silent. You might want to say something. So to tell yourself, I have to do certain way, like I have to remain silent and all that, then it's not appropriate because every situation keep changing. There are many conditions, dependent origination. Every single, every single situation has many, many different conditions and keep changing. So the best way is to flow with it. And how to flow with it is to be with, in this quiet, peaceful state of mind. Then you will have the innate wisdom to do what needs to be do, done or not to do. Okay, brothers and sisters in the Dharma, uh, I guess you'll end here. Uh, I'm sure all of you agree for the past one and a half hour, we've been enjoying ourselves uh, with this uh, very insightful Dharma talk. Uh, shall we put our palms together and say Sadhu three times a thank Bhante? Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. sadhu. Thank you, Bhante. So brothers and sisters in the Dharma, please remember to come back at 7.30. Uh, Sister Rachel, you want to take a photo? Oh, yes, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay, so everybody on the camera, uh, good thought process, happy mind, cheerful mind. Okay, Rachel, the king. Yeah. yeah. Okay, one more second page. Yeah. Three, two, one. Okay, thank you, brother and sister. Thank you, Bante, with your permissions. Okay, see you all at 7.30.